Hi, welcome to my workshop. Today I'll be building Annie's lunch counter from Nick and Nora Designs. This is a great kit that I'm building for a client. Now in their instructions they show a picture of the original that was set in the 20s. I'm going to be building mine for a layout that's set in the late 40s. So I first did research on what lunch counters looked like during that time period. I knew I'd be putting an interior in it. So let's get started. This shows all the parts that you get in the kit. The first thing that I started was taking my walls and doing a little bit of distressing of the clapboard on them using a razor blade. Then I started to cut the bracing for my walls. I used my Ultimation slicer for this. Then I started applying the bracing to my walls, knowing that it would be visible inside. Once dry, I first applied a driftwood stain to the outside, and then lightly went over it with buttermilk acrylic paint. Then I turned my attention to the front window, which is one of the focal points of this kit. I used liquid PSA to put it together, so I didn't have any glue squeezing out. And it went together very well. I was very happy with how it turned out. When it was dry, I test fitted in the front wall to see what it looked like. It definitely needs an interior inside that building. The rest of the windows are Tishy castings. I went ahead and primed them first, and then tried a couple different whites to see which one would look best with the siding. And I picked a pure white for painting the windows. I also used a white for painting the interior walls. And I started to work on the corner trim which I first used a stain on and then also painted them white so they'd match the window trim. After painting them, a light touch with a sanding stick makes the wood look worn. Now it was time to start attaching the corner trim to my walls. I attached it to the front and back walls. Then I'd use one, two, three blocks to hold it in place while the glue was drying. Then while they were drying, I turned my attention to putting a little bit of weathering on the windows. Weathering pencils work very nicely for this. These are water soluble colors and you can ply them and then use the water to thin them as much as you want to get the effect that you're after. Now I was ready to start attaching the sign. It comes on a sheet that includes an interior background, but it was too modern for my late 40s. But I cut out the sign and sanded the back of it till it was thin, then applied a mixture of water and white glue. Then as I'm applying it, I roll it on so it doesn't get stretched and become difficult to push into the clapboard. Then as I'm applying it, I use a brush to put some weathering on it. Then I cut out for the window and the door. Now it was time to add the image onto the back wall. Since I couldn't use the one supplied, I found one online. And it was going to be the kitchen behind my counter. And I added a door to it and attached it to my back wall. And I had gone to Pete's 3D modeling to get a bunch of kitchen stuff that I was going to use. It included counters and also some booths. And I started playing with how I was going to lay out my luncheonette. Putting the walls together temporarily gave me the size that I was going to be working in. I did need to cut the end off of what was going to be the front counter. Now it was time to start gluing the walls together. I first put a side and a back wall together. Then when it was dry, I glued the other side wall onto that assembly, using the front wall to hold everything together. Then I glued together the walls of the back room. I had scanned and printed out some of the front 
signs to test rusting on it. And once I picked one I liked, I went ahead and rusted the sign that came with the kit and glued it onto the front wall. Then I test fit the front wall into my building to see how it looked. Now it was time to glue the back room onto the building. And then I had to add some additional trim where the back room joined the building. I don't like seeing those gaps. Now it was time to start working on the interior furniture. First I took the table and chairs that I had gotten from Shapeways and I put a gray primer on those. Then before gluing the front window into the front wall, I added a silver plate to push on for the front door. And then I glued the window in place. At that point I added the glass to all the rest of my windows. And I noticed one place on the inside where I needed to put a chair rail because the boosts weren't coming up against the wall. So I made a small one and glued it in place. Then after it was dry I went ahead and stained it. And now it was time to glue the front wall in place on the building. And next up was gluing all the doors and windows in place. And now for priming the rest of the furniture, I used an acrylic primer on the booths, but I used a resin primer on all the kitchenware because it was going to be sprayed with the silver. Then it was time to paint all of the tables, chairs, and the booths. I used a mixture of a couple different browns to get a somewhat varied effect. Now for my curtains I wanted them to be transparent. So I first found some cafe curtains online that I liked. Then after printing them out I taped on some tissue paper and ran them through the printer again. And this gets my curtains printed onto the tissue paper. Then I cut them out and use a liquid PSA to glue the tissue paper curtains in place. Once the inside of the building is lit, you'll be able to see the light shining through the curtains much better than if you had just printed them on paper. My front counter was going to be brown and stainless steel, so first I masked off the back of it and painted it brown. Then once that was dry, I masked off the brown portion of it and then got it ready to paint with all the rest of the kitchen equipment. And I used a spray can of stainless steel to paint all of them. You can see in these two photos the inferior quality of the Shapeways items compared to Pete's modeling. I may not even use these chairs in the end. but my cabinet was done and now it was time to start painting some of the details on some of my kitchen pieces. All of the different items on the kitchen needed to be a different color so it ended up using a lot of paints. But then after putting the wash on them I think they came out looking pretty good. I quickly put them in place just to see how it looked. Next I started working on the roof, first for the back room, and then the main roof. I sprayed some spray glue on it and then applied some Activa so it would look like a tar and gravel roof. Since the main roof was going to be removable, I cut some thin strips that would end up being supports to hold it in place. They would also work as a light block so that no light would get out around the edge of the roof. Then I started putting cushions onto my booths. And doing a little bit of touch up on some of my kitchen items. Now it was time to work on a stove pipe and a ventilator for the roofs. I was going to have a stove pipe in back where there was probably heating. 
And then once it was in place, I'd also add a vent pipe for plumbing. And then this main vent would be over the kitchen and it would be a handle where you can lift the roof off. If you've worked with tissue castings, you know how easy it is to sand them so that they look smooth. Then I painted them two different colors. I'd cleared an area where my vent was going to be glued onto the roof so it would be nice and strong. And this was how they were going to turn out. And I started rusting my vent. I love using oils and dirty down rust for items like this. Now the kit comes with a nice hydrocal base for the building to sit on. And I had already put a floor on it. But once I was looking at it, I didn't like the stonework that was on the edges. And I wanted to do something a little different. So I decided to go ahead and build a foundation for it. After tracing the outline of the building, I used some 8 inch strip wood and cut some foundation pieces using my slicer and then my sander. Then I was able to put them together and they'd fit right underneath the building with just a slight overhang. I glued them together and then made the same foundation for the back room. Using the ultimation tools really makes it easy to build these kinds of projects. I put some support in between and cut a floor that would go into place and sit inside the frame I had made. And then I glued the foundation for the back room onto the foundation for the main building. I painted it black all the way around in case any little bit of it showed. Then for making the stoops, I decided to use some MDF. And I cut it to approximately the same sizes as on the Hydrocal foundation. Then after they were cut, I brought them back and used my sander to round off the corners and the edges so they end up looking more like cast concrete. I used a Copic marker. Some of those shades come out looking quite a bit like stonework or concrete. In order to make sure they would hold in place, I drilled into them and used some wire that would then go into the foundation. And I glued the wire into the steps, but I wanted to apply my rock work to the foundation before I glued them to it. I have sheets of this stonework that's on a material that's embossed, sort of like a heavy paper or a light plastic. And I've used it before and really like the way it comes out looking. So I glued it all the way around the foundation. And I'm happier with how this looks. And then after cutting out another floor pattern, I glued it to the floor I had made and then glued the building in place weighting it down while the glue was drying. And I went back and played with some of the furniture inside to see how it would look. At this point I tried putting a couple LEDs inside and I found that two LEDs were just about right for lighting up the interior. And now it was time to start attaching the furniture inside the building. I first drilled holes where the stools were going to go in place, having put the counter in and marking where they'd go. Then I started gluing in all of my kitchen pieces and the booths, starting from the back of the kitchen and working my way forward. After they were all glued in, I started putting some more signs on the inside, again getting things that were period correct. And one thing I thought the tables and booths needed were napkin holders. So I found if I painted a piece of styrene silver and then cut it, it looked pretty good. I also have a selection of mini prints bottles and I thought they'd work good as ketchup bottles. So I painted them. Now it was time to start working on the lighting. 
I drew the shape of the roof on a piece of cardboard so I could start laying out my pieces to see where they would go. I was using parts from Evan Designs. Once I had decided how I would lay them out, I just super glued all the pieces in place. And now the roof can be lifted off and there's a switch to turn it on and off. And I liked how the interior was looking with the curtains and some of the pieces in place. Now it was time to glue the roof onto the back room. And I put it in place and had it held down while the glue was drying. Next I glued all of the steps in place using the holes that I had drilled. I used clamps to hold them in place while the glue was drying. Next up it was to build the cornice that went around the top roof. And again I was able to get a perfect 45 degree angle using my slicer. And this came out being a perfect fit so you could still lift the roof off. And I then glued all of the pieces in place. And while they were drying I started rusting some signs that were going to go on the outside of the building. Some came with the kit and some I had downloaded and printed out. One of the other nice things that came with the kit was a sheet where you could make cardboard boxes. And I made a couple of them and put them on the kitchen counters where they could be unloading items. Now it was time to start weathering the building. And I like to use artist pigments for this. I have a selection of brushes and I picked a few colors that I wanted to use. I would weather around the signs and around the foundation and the door thresholds. Now I enjoy doing this work. You have a lot of control over using the artist pigments and how much you want to apply them. Then last was a couple little details, like putting the tar weathering around the vent pipes. And I was now pretty much done with the building. I'm still waiting for some better 3D printed chairs to come in, and I'll replace the ones that came from Shapeways. But otherwise, I'm happy with how it came out. The lighting inside really accentuates all of the furniture and the signs. And I think it does a good job showing what the inside of a lunch counter would look like in the 40s. You may be wondering where the confectionery comes into play. Well, I asked Mike Baker at Nick and Nora about that. And he said that's what it had on the original building. So maybe in addition to Sloppy Joe's, they served chocolate and bonbons in the back. Anyway, I enjoyed building it, and I hope you enjoyed watching, and maybe got a tip or two out of it. Thanks for watching.